Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Vessel Evangelist Brenda Thompson coming to you today. Today I greet you in no other name than in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and soon coming King. The title of my message today is from the bottommost to the uppermost. My message is taken from Luke chapter 15 verse 11 to 24 and my reference is Romans chapter 5 verse 17 to 20 and Romans chapter 8 verse 1 and 2. And he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together, and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his field to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with a husk that a swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven before thee, and am no worthy to be called of thy son, make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him, and had compassion, and ran, and fell on his neck, and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be men. Please turn with me to Romans chapter 5. Verse 17 to 20. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one's judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life for by as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous moreover the law entered that the offense might abound but where sin abounded grace did much more abound 
There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. Father, I come to you today in no other name than in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray today that this message will be a blessing to the hearers and will minister grace and peace and righteousness to all those who are in need of these. In Jesus' name, Amen. This scripture is a parable. What is a parable? A parable is a simple story used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson. According to Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse 17, the owner of two sons was entitled to twice times their father's estate. In this lesson, the younger son received a third which I believe he was supposed to use to bring honor to his father. But in verse 13, this lesson tells us not many days after he had gotten all his inheritance, his life's wealth, that he was so immature that he took a dangerous turn in life. He went into a far country and he wasted or misused all his lifetime inheritance to wasteful living. And because of his inexperience and negligence, he ended up in trouble. Please turn with me to verse 14. Because of innocence 
and bring us to a place of defeat and shame. Stay in your safety zone. Please look with me at verse 16. And he would say, the word say mean gladly, have filled his belly with a husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. What a disaster from eating at a table with a setting of a king and then coming to swine's food. In verse 16, it tells us that he ate the husk that the swine did eat and no man gave him food. But John chapter 14 says, In my father's house there are many mansions. Jesus said, so if it were not so, I would have told you. In verse 20, if you want your breakthrough, you must reposition yourself for your breakthrough. Today, if you have left your father's house and the world has stripped you of all that you have, Praise the Lord. God is saying to you to return. Please look with me at verse 20. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Even when you arise and are still at a distance, your heavenly Father will recognize you and have mercy on you. And he will run towards you and kiss you. He will have compassion on you. In verse 21, this son, prodigal son, prays a prayer of repentance. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. There is room on the cross for you. Verse 22 speaks about change and honor, change of heart, change of mind, change of clothing, and a ring on the hand symbolizes Jesus being married to the backslider. Verse 23 represents access to the Father, the throne, the forgiveness of sin. Joy and represents the shedding of blood. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And the Bible said that the only way we have access into the throne room is by the shedding of blood. Verse 24 represents joy. In Psalm 16, verse 11 said, In his presence there is fullness of joy, and at his right hands there are pleasures forevermore. If you are experiencing the God of us, there is an extended invitation for you today. Come and experience the uppermost. Jesus wants to bring you into a revolutionary extravaganza. It's called the upper most. It is the best place of your life. Today, in my conclusion, I would like to pray the blood of Jesus' prayer for your deliverance 
from a place of vulnerability, a place of defeat, a place of shamefulness, a place of loss, a place of poverty, to a place of restoration today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord Father, I come to you today in no other name than in the mighty name of Jesus. A prayer, a prayer of change, a prayer of deliverance, a prayer for grace, a prayer for divine protection, a prayer of restoration and mercy and grace and peace and truth, a praise, place of a revelation today. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that your blood, hallelujah, which is the blood of Jesus Christ, will prevail upon every situation and every circumstance that concerns all those on the sound of my voice. I pray that your blood will prevail today and bring restoration in the name of Jesus that you pray. Hallelujah. Your blood will bring change and it will bring deliverance today. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead, I plead, I plead, I plead today. The blood of Jesus in the atmosphere. The, door, the blood of Jesus on your doorpost. The blood of Jesus upon your window. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. The blood, the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. I pray today in the mighty name of Jesus that the blood of Jesus will continue to prevail right now and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you.